I've pretty much got my making of ground foam down to fine art. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Start off some cheap 99p for three car sponges. Chop them up into smaller pieces with a pair of scissors. Sling them into a liquidizer. Mine is a Kenwood, Kenwood Chef, an old one, which I've put it into the liquidizer jug. It's got a four blade sort of like whizzy bit that goes round. There's loads of water in there. Okay, if you haven't got the water, that'll jam up and that won't cut up so much. So we'll grind that down in that or liquidize that down. Then that's gonna go onto the mincer attachment. You can use a hand mincer, you can use a separate mincer or whatever. So sponge, chop up, stick it in there, whiz it, plenty of water. Now obviously I've already started that. Now to show you the mincing stage, let's move this out of the way. And, right, don't switch it on with the lid off. Twat. Well, that goes to show, doesn't it? Nobody likes a smart ass. So, I fed a bunch of my foam into the mincer. Pop it in push it down a little bit it's going to start coming through now you need to keep this stuff wet okay it's just starting to come through now I'll put a bit more so I've got a bit more pressure behind it Now, obviously, never push it down into the mincer with your fingers while, you know, it's running because that's just, well, for obvious reasons. I don't even need to explain, do I? You just can cut your fingers off. So, switch that on. I'm using a wooden spoon. Don't want to press it too far because obviously then it will start to cause me problems. Pour the water in so that it starts coming out. Seems to jammed up a little bit here. There you go, starting to come through now. It just got too dry. So just keep getting the water and that's going to pop through. Right, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to put my water back into this jug, pop that back under, switch it back on and drop the water through again. It's also given an extra mince to the foam that was in there. That's literally what we're going to do, we're going to keep feeding it through like that. Sooner or later you can get a bit of a production line thing going so you're continually mincing and shredding and grinding the same foam over and over again. See that? It is a messy job, especially if you're me but it's worth it. I found my hopper which made things easier so I've been putting stuff through, also put my smaller mincer attachment on the end and went from one bowl into the other. I've just poured the bowl into my sieve with some muslin, some cheesecloth and that is my lovely ground foam now that will clump a little bit because it's wet however this is going to get dried out tonight and it's also going to get um painted up and dried out so we're we're in a good situation now i've got plenty of foam there and that will obviously puff up when it's dried because that's all wet and dense now so that's my lump of foam 
which I've ground up and then squeezed with the cheesecloth or in the cheesecloth to get as much of the moisture out. So you can see that's come out really fine. You know, if we look on the back of the spoon, yeah, it's dust. So that's really good. So now I'm going to put some paint in it and shake it all up. There we go. So I've got some green paint, which is a very bluey green, and a load of yellow. It's probably about two thirds yellow, one third blue green. It's just cheap paint, cheap matte emulsion, feature wool from Poundland. Poundland, you'd expect it to be a pound, but it was like two pound, three pound tin. But there we go. That's what we want. So there we go. A tub of ground up foam, which has been mixed with some paint ready to dry out, crumble up and uh, sprinkle on. There we go. So let's bring it over into the light. Look at that. Lovely. So that's another three sponges worth of ground foam. So it's lovely and fine. It's been dried out on the radiator overnight and then it's very dusty from the paint. Dried out, then crumbled up and sieved. And that's ready to go on. So that will fill my other gaps.